Good day, everyone. This is uh, Mrs. Angeline Rodriguez Ponce, and uh, I'm part of Group 5, and I'm going to report uh, about Christian practice in the modern world. Okay, so the introduction of this is the 20th, uh, the 20th century continued to uh, generate important Christian myths and legend-based practices, including the pilgrimages made on Marian feast days to holy wells and fairy rings outside the Irish town of Sneem and devotions at the tomb of Christ in Japan, as you can see in the clip. Uh, where, according to local legends, uh, Christ ended the long life of missionary travels when he began after his mock death in Jerusalem. These acts and the explanations that accompany them detail the impact of Christian salvation on reality in modern times. In all the cultures where Christianity has been propagated, myth and religious desires and hopes that constituted the religious traditions before contact with Christian revelation. The following examples such as their variety and vitality. Before I uh, show you the uh, variety and vitality, the examples, um, I just would like to inform you that uh, as a Christian, so some of these um, topics that I'm going to talk about is uh, just uh, myths and legends and makeup of uh, people but um, as a Christian uh, as a, a Bible uh, a Bible uh, a student of the Bible um, we uh, we should have a knowledge uh, regarding the uh, the real life of Christ so this is uh, just a part of uh, stories of what the people need okay so okay so moving on the healing of a sickness is as it was in the time of the new testament a sign of the coming of the kingdom of christ in fullness in africa for example many so-called independent churches have reinterpreted disease and rites of cure along christian lines in douala cameroon during the 1980s two healing prophets named mala and Marie Lumiere divided their disciples, whom they called the sick ones of the Father, into two groups named for the important categories of illness described in the Gospels, the blind, the halt, the lame, the deaf, the epileptic, the dumb, and the paralyzed. The disciples evidenced none of these physical symptoms, but they were asked to identify deep within themselves with the affliction described in the gospel so that salvation might touch them in their inner being. By becoming sick, they could be healed and thus join the elect. In lengthy sermons, the healing prophets reimagined traditional African experience of their peculiar mystical disorders afforded a basis for social regrouping and for rethinking the past and the present. Okay, so as we can see, the Christian expression of sacred music and trance is often grounded in legend or myth. In Brazil, for example, Macumba, in Macumba, Candomblé, and other Afro-Brazilian cults, as you have uh, noticed um, in that um, country, they love those kind of cults, so it's like common to them. Okay, so in other Afro-Brazilian cults have roots sunk deep into the re religions of African slaves, transplanted to the new world. So Af uh, Afro-Brazilian rights often center on possession, in Banasasaniban, in Tagalog, by a supernatural being called an Orixa. Or I don't know how they pronounce it, but it sounds like it's Orixa. So the innumer innumerable Orixas are ranked in hierarchies modeled on the pantheons of the Yoruba people of West 
Africa among others so if you're planning to be a missionary to Africa you will learn more about this so not only in Africa also in Brazil in other parts of uh, those countries so in Brazil and in much of Afro-American religious life of the Americas each orexa is identified with a specific Christian saint so in the Umbanda cult of Brazil altars hold small plaster images of the Christian saints associated with the orexas each one of the saints proceeds over a dominion of human activity or over a disease social group geographic area or craft for example Omolu the god of smallpox <laughs> you know uh, this is the only time that I heard that there's a god of smallpox <laughs> I'm a nurse by the way by profession so it's identified with St. Lazarus. St. Lazarus, I only know, is the hospital here in the Philippines. So, <laughs> whose body in Christian legend? Ah, okay, so I'm also learning. It's po a pocket with sores and who heals diseases of the skin. Maybe because they identified it with St. Lazarus because of the Lazarus uh, um, in the Bible story. So, maybe they uh, made up people made up stories like this so who <laughs> very creative mind oxoxy the yoruba god of hunting is associated with a bel uh, bellicose saint george or saint michael the slayers of dragons and demons yansan who ate the magic of uh, her husband and now spits up lightning is associated with Saint Barbara whose father was struck by lightning when he tried to force her to give up her Christian faith are you ready to give up your Christian faith personally I don't want to in the worship site each orixa has its own stone which is peculiarly shaped colored or textured arranged in a distinctive position on the altar and identified as the cross of Christ. A single saint may be identified with several orixas or vice versa. Regions vary the saintly identifications and some designations shift over time. Each orixa has its own musical rhythms and sounds when called by drums dance and music the supernatural being may take over the possessed medium reveal valued information and carry out effective symbolic acts on behalf of the community so as you can be able to observe uh, Africans love to dance, have their ritual ritual dances, singing, so you know what is going on over there already. Okay, so European communities in the 20th century remain fascinated with the uh, rigorous asceticism of Saint Anthony of Egypt, who repulsed the assaults of wild beasts, reptiles, and demons, and remained steadfast in the faith and as Christians we uh, there is, we know that there is only one who can be able to defeat those uh, evil forces and that is God okay so he is considered the patron of domestic animals and in many parts of Italy the drama of the feast of Saint Anthony historically associated with the winter sol solstice rivals any other feast day of the Christian calendar. To celebrate his feast, wow, the people of Phara Filiorum Petri, a town in the Abruzzi region of Italy, ignite enormous bonfires on the night of January 16. Ooh, next day, it's already my birthday. Each of the 12 outlying hamlets 
brings into the main town's square a bundle or farsha of long poles. Set on end, the bundles are lashed together to form a single tall mass, an act that commemorates the historical union of mountain settlements as one bonded community. Then the bundles of Farshi, 15 or more feet high, are set ablaze. So, nililiyaban siya in Tagalog. The fire is believed to cleanse the community and hold as bay the evil forces of sickness and death. As the fire dies down, young men jump through the purifying flames. Isn't it funny? Why they don't do this, uh, this rituals when the fire is still, you know, blowing up high? <laughs> Why they do only this when the fire dies, da dies down because they are afraid to be, you know, to be hurt? <laughs> okay, so it's a little bit funny. Expectators carry remnants of the blessed fire back to their homes, spreading the ashes in their stalls and on their fields okay so moving on the birth of christ was still a focus on the 20th century for traditional legends and myths and had developed outside ecclesiastical institutions so in rural uh, in rural romania for instance on christmas eve groups of young caroler, uh, carolers would call in the tori proceed from house to house in village singing and collecting gifts of food. So, ito yung, uh, this where you, uh, the history of uh, caroling uh, began. So, often this caroler, uh, carolers impersonated the saints, uh, especially saints uh, John, Peter, George, and Nicholas. Nicholas is, I think that is, uh, they call it Santa. So, Santa Claus. So the words of their songs, Colind, Colinde, describe legendary heroes who carry the sun and wear the moon on their clothes. They live in paradisal worlds and subdue monstrous animals in order to leave the world free from harm and ready to renew itself in the fertile acts of spring. Hmm, I wonder. Okay, so the symbolic reenactments of legend often experiment with alternative uh, social orders and criticize or reverse existing divisions of labor and prestige. In Salishan American communities of Texas, Louisiana, California, and elsewhere, the female head of the household dedicates and displays an altar to Saint Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, and thus fulfills a promise made in a monument of need. Okay. <laughs> she prepares fruit, hard boiled eggs, cakes, fig filled pastries, pies, and special breads, and uses them to decorate a series of tears stretching from floor to ceiling. Imagine that um, if us, uh, if the other, uh, I mean, the religious uh, groups does this to be able to, uh, you know, to ask for help from, from their gods or from their God. What more for us Christians? Why can't we be able to give our 100% to our one true God? Hmm, right? Okay, so moving on. She also arranges on this festival altar figurines of saints, the Virgin Mary, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Okay, so you can be able to see this in Catholics. All right, so the construction of this uh, panorama takes nine days, a period that constitutes a ritual novena of prayer and devout action. Representatives who act in the accompanying uh, ceremony play the roles of the Holy Family. So the Holy Family is uh, Jesus Christ, um, uh, 
uh, Mama Mary and the Father Joseph. Okay, so and other saints important to the altar display, recreating the Holy Family's search for room in Bethlehem in on the night of the Nativity. The ritual drama builds towards a monument when the altar giver opens her home to Joseph and Mary. As Mary prepares to give birth to Jesus, the hostess redeems her home, heart, and community so that they may become fit dwelling places for the sacred being. Okay, so as we have all know, um, in our um, if uh, you've been enrolled in the, the Bible uh, the Bible school, um, the natin alaman that um, Jesus Christ was really born in an inn, not in a manger. So, um, and, uh, and so the presiding woman played the roles of magi kings. So actually, uh, this is uh, they are not magi kings. Okay, so they are the in, in the Bible it's the three wise men. Okay, bearing gifts of food and hospitality to the holy family and their entourage, which includes most of the neighboring community. A single family can host from 500 to 1,000 people in the feast that terminates the celebration. Okay, so and again the. Um, the three wise men did not give food or um, whatever, but they gave three special gifts, which is the gold, frankincense, and mirror. Okay. All right. So, like I said, they have three, uh, they have um, significant meaning, why, uh, which is connected also to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. So, um, Moving forward, sometimes the new Christian mythologies uh, functions as counter theologies or theologies of resistance to the impositions of Christian culture. They criticize the Christian missionary uh, enterprise even while they embrace aspects of the new religion. In the 20th century, for instance, biblical and Christian themes occupied a large part of the mythology of the Makiri Tare Indians in the upper uh, Orinoco River regions of Venezuela. For them, Wanadi, as you can be able to see, there's a clip part of that, Wanadi was the supreme being of great light. And although one being, he exists in three distinct persons. Tamodede or spirit doubles. Over the course of creation and human history, uh, Wanadi has sent his three incarnations to earth in order to create human beings and redeem them from the darkness into which they have fallen. So, as we as you uh, uh, read this more and more, um, they're like. Um, Parabang, they're changing the real history of the the, the Trinity, the God, uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. So, um, people really are changing, you know, the 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 right the history or or the uh, what is the history regarding in, in the Bible? Okay, so in the end, Wanadi, the God incarnate, who comes to save humankind. So I think um, this is um, comparing or the parang it's um, they're placing it or replacing Jesus Christ. Okay, it's crucified by mythical monsters called Panurus from the Spanish Españoles Spaniards at the instigation of an evil being called Padre. <laughs> evil being pala sila. <laughs> from the Spanish Padre, Father, or Priests. Okay, so to all appearances, Wanadi was slain by the Fanurus, but in fact, he cut his own insides out and allowed his inner spirit, Akato, to dance free of his uh, dead cast off body before his spirit ascends into heaven. Wanadi gathers his 12 disciples together. 
to me, 12 disciples, ano niya siya. So, it's like they're, uh, they're replacing Jesus Christ. Okay, when Adi gathers his 12 disciples together and promises to return in in a new and glorious body to destroy the evil world and create a new earth. Okay, so unlike the orthodox canon of Christian scripture, which was inscribed and closed in the first centuries, Christian myth and legend have arisen anew throughout all of Christian history. It offers a record of the spread of Christianity throughout the Mediterranean, Eastern, and Western Europe, Asia, Africa, Oceania, and Americas, and highlights of the diversity of cultures brought into contact with the Christian message of salvation. So it's really different if you're really going to um, really meditate on the Word of God and really know what really happened according to the Bible. Okay, so the diverse religious hopes, heroes, and rights of these cultures continue to shape reinterpretations of the life of Christ and His saintly followers. So if we, uh, for us, um, us, um, those who are, who have intelligence in the Bible, why not we share if we have that um, privilege or opportunity to gain those um, history or learnings uh, regarding the Bible? It's, um, it's a good thing actually na you'll be able to um, share it or spread the truth to the people so they, they will know not this kind of myth and legends but the real truth according to the word of god okay so legend and myth constitute a record of critical reflection in christian reality in all its dimensions which is social political economic doctrinal and scriptural no social class or geographic region can lay exclusive claim to christian myth and legend they fill the stanzas of royally sponsored poets, the visions of utopian philosophers, and the folklore of rural populations. Indeed, many ideas widely held about the workings of salvation, especially regarding the saints, uh, the angels, the devil, and the powers of nature, find their origin in legendary episodes rather than biblical texts so sad okay so through myth and legend communities across the globe have absorbed into their rich religious histories the message of christian salvation and through the same fabulous means they have evaluated the impact of christian temporal power on their world Thank you so much for listening. So I'll be giving you to our next reporter, Mr. Brent Norbe. Thank you so much.